If you're getting started on your first micro-segmentation project or faced with the prospect of needing to, this is the perfect video for you, along with the accompanying white paper on how to manage a micro-segmentation deployment. The good news is, is that at Illumio, over the last six years, we've helped a lot of people in your position get through this successfully, on time, on budget, with all project deliverables completed. So here's the big things that you're gonna to wanna to think about as you manage a micro-segmentation deployment. The first of them is you're gonna to wanna to deeply understand the implications of changing the security model. When you move enforcement from the network onto the hosts, that's different. When you use labels or metadata instead of IP addresses to build your policy, that's different. When you use a zero trust whitelist instead of a mixed white and blacklist, you get a whole bunch of benefits, but there's some things in there to understand. So there are some things that as you evolve into a newer model, you're going to have some opportunities that you wanna fully understand how to take advantage of. Of course, to do that, you're gonna need the right people on the deployment team. And to do this, you're going to need people from a couple of different places inside the organization, not all at once and not for long periods of time. In addition to your normal project team, you're probably gonna need some input from people on the network team at one point, the security team, the operations team, somebody to help you install agents, perhaps somebody to help you with operational integration with Splunk or Sims or logging or event handling systems and those kind of workflows. You may need somebody from DevOps who's interested in automation or in system management who can help get things bolted into your cloud automation framework. All of these are things where we can help you to get the right people kind of engaged at the right time. As you go through this, there's gonna be some checkpoints and some things that you wanna to do to um, both give yourself opportunity as well as to avoid pain. Probably top on this list is getting everybody through overview training as early as you can. What I would do is take that entire extended project team, even the people that are gonna be involved for four or five hours, and get them into your vendor's two to three day overview training. As soon as that training is done, take that group of people in the room and do the detailed project planning with your vendor. If you do that, everyone's mind will be fresh with the architecture, with their concerns, and the things that they need to see reflected in the plan to have confidence. If you do that simple thing as a manager, you will get most of the benefits and avoid most of the pain as the extended team identifies everything that your organization needs to care about. There are places that teams tend to get stuck, and in the guide, we cover five of them. But the broad brushstroke is this. The team is gonna to tend to get stuck at the transition points, the state changes. Maybe if the solution has a monitor mode and then a build mode or a build mode and then an enforce mode. The places where things change, the places where they're not sure what happens when they click the button. In every one of those cases, there's all kinds of testing and preparation and process that can be put in place so you won't have any problems. And your team can help you even design that and notice it. But as a manager, what you wanna notice is that those places exist. And that if you're able to identify them and help them ensure that completion is reached, there won't be any problems at those places. As you think about managing the vendor relationship, I'd encourage you to maintain three relationships. The most important is the one that you'll build yourself with an executive at your vendor's side. Get a cadence going with somebody who's invested in the success of your project and who's willing to listen to the honest feedback if things aren't going well. And I think you'll find that that ends up helping a lot. If you combine that with a good project management cadence with the project managers and the senior people in your organization and the vendors, that will keep everything going on time and on track for your business goals. And then, of course, the technical level can be fully invested in actually doing the work. And that's the professional service engineers from the vendor, the technical people on your staff, and getting the work done. Finally, when you think about operational integration, probably the big thing to do is to make sure you're actually taking advantage of all of the 
operational integration opportunities with your SIM, the eventing and alerting to get that done fully before you go into prod the first time. If you do that, you'll avoid a lot of problems of lack of confidence on the operations staff. If they can clearly see what is and isn't happening, it'll go a long way towards developing confidence. And finally, it'll also help you if you take advantage of one or more of the automation opportunities that exist. Most security and network teams want to go faster. They have pressure from DevOps and application teams to go faster. So give them a win. Find an, a simple automation project that makes a difference in your world and get it done. And you'll find that you build a lot of goodwill and camaraderie in your peer group across the company. Micro segmentation projects are possible. They can be a wild success and a great feather in your cap when done correctly. So if you have questions, be sure to download the guide. Medium tells me that it's only a 19 minute read. And so I think you can go through it quickly after this overview and extract the bits that are most useful to you and ensure that you have a successful micro segmentation project.